Hi, I'm JJ Barnes and you're watching another episode of Creative Writing for Kids. So today I'm going to be talking to you about foreshadowing. And it's okay if you don't know that word because sometimes I use these big writer words and I'm going to explain. So foreshadowing is a technique you can use in your story to hint to your audience what's going to happen. Not tell them what's going to happen, just hint. So if you think about when you're standing and you're looking at the sun, don't look directly at it, but in that direction, your shadow is behind you. Your shadow says where you've been. You've been walking in that direction. Your shadow is in the past. Your shadow is where you've been. If you foreshadow, it tells your audience where you're going. And that's the most basic way I can put it. Your shadow is behind you. Your foreshadow is in front of you. It says where you're going to go. So the purpose of foreshadowing is so that when your story is moving forwards and you're maybe building to a dramatic event or a plot twist or some kind of reveal, it doesn't come out of nowhere. Because if it comes out of nowhere, it can kind of feel like you're making it up on the spot. It can feel a bit unprepared, unplanned, and that's just not the best kind of writing. But if you foreshadow it, when you get there, it tells your readers that you've known where you have been going from the beginning. And I'm going to give you a trick to how to do this at the end, but bear with me. So if you think about an example of foreshadowing, I'm going to talk to you about Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Because in that, the big reveal at the end is that Professor Quirrell has Voldemort, you know, in the back of his head under his turban and is actually a bad guy, when all the way through it looks like J.K. Rowling has been telling you that Quirrell is a good guy. But when you look back from the story, so if you start at the end and look backwards, all the way through it has been foreshadowed. The hints have been there. You have the talking about how the turban smells funny and how he never used to wear it, but he picks it up from, you know, Romania or wherever it was, and that's new, so the turban is new and it smells weird. You have him talking to Snape in the forest, and you're, you're set up to think that Snape is the bad guy of this story, but when you look at the conversation, actually it is Quirrell who was being the bad guy there. You have the troll in the dungeon, all the way through, little tiny hints are being given to the reader or the you know the viewer if you're watching the film instead that that's what's coming and it just means that when you get to the end and that reveal happens it's even more satisfying because it makes sense you can look back and be like yeah because she looked forwards to tell it now i'm going to give you a hint on how to do this because it's really hard if you try and do it from the beginning and you're thinking to yourself, but I don't know where my story's gonna go. I don't know what I need to hint at. I don't know how to drop those in. I don't even know the end yet. And I'm gonna give you a tip because I can't do it all from the beginning either. I'd love to be able to just, you know, know exactly what I'm gonna write and do it perfectly the first time, but I can't do that. So it's okay that you can't either. So this is when you do your editing. And I did a video before about editing and how you can get other people to do your spelling and your grammar. But this is a different kind of editing. This is when you go into your story, when you've finished it, and then fix it so it kind of looks like you knew what you were doing from the beginning. But you didn't. But you pretend you did. And it's really, really clever because your readers, they don't know that you haven't known from the beginning. And it doesn't matter because they're not in it for the process. They're in it for the end result. So go back into your story. And if you want to have a reveal that, say, a goodie is actually a baddie and has been, you know, your, your friend to your, prota your main character, your protagonist, their mate, is actually working for the bad guy, like, that's a big dramatic reveal at the end. And it's great, like Quirrell, very effective and dramatic and exciting. But if you go back into the earlier parts of your story, you can hint it. So go in. Go into your Word document if you're lucky enough to do it on a computer or just stick arrows in because when you rewrite it by hand you can just fill it in, it's fine. But put hints in. Have moments where maybe the character sort of looks a little bit suspicious or says something that could be interpreted two ways or something's overheard like Quirrell and Snape in the forest and you overhear part of a conversation. And it's okay that you haven't done it from the first go because 
what the matter? The story at the end is the point. So that's foreshadowing. Um, I'll probably do more videos on this because it is difficult and it's big and I've done lots of videos and blogs on it for grown-ups so it's a big concept to try and fill in your mind and in your story so I will come back again if you have any questions as I say it's a biggie and it's not the easiest thing to do but there's so many examples from good stories so if you have questions let me know um my facebook is creative writing for kids with jj barnes i've also put a whole page on my website just for this with a contact form so you can come and message me there and also loads of different activities so basically come talk to me ask anything you want to know and if you do have an example of really good foreshadowing from a story you like and you can say yeah i know what you're talking about i know what this means because it's in this film or this book or this tv show come tell me and maybe i can use that when i talk about this again and that'd be cool reference something that you know and love so yeah come find me tell me what you're doing and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and my video because that way i know that you're enjoying it and i can keep doing it so thank you very much i'll be back again soon bye